the ear is responsible for translating variations in air pressure whether from speech music or other sources into the neural activity necessary for our perception and interpretation of sound the ear can be divided mainly into three principal sections the outer ear the middle ear and the inner ear each of these parts performs a specific function in processing sound information the external ear which consists of pinna concha and auditory meatus gathers sound energy and focuses it onto a eardrum or it is also known as tympanic membrane the configuration of the external ear amplifies the sound particularly at the frequency ranges of 2 to 5 kilohertz a range that is important for the speech perception now from the ear canal the sound waves vibrate the eardrum which in turn vibrates the three tiny bones in the middle ear the malleus incus and stapes the stapes vibrates a small membrane at the base of the cochlea the oval window which transmits the amplified vibrational energy to the fluids which is present in the cochlea because of the entire structure is filled with the fluid movement within the cochlea is responsible to push the oval window requires the presence of mobile outlet membrane this particular membrane is a round window which separates the scala tympani from the middle ear now we are talking about the inner ear the complex structures of the inner ear converts the sound into neural activity in mammals the auditory portion of the inner ear is called as the coiled structure known as cochlea the region nearest the oval window membrane is the base of the spiral and other end or top is referred to as the apex along the length of the cochlea are three parallel canals the scala tympani the scala vestibuli and the scala media the principal elements for converting sounds into neural activity are mainly found on the basilar membrane which is a flexible structure which separates the scala tympani from the scala media let's take a closer look at the basilar membrane by unrolling the cochlea and peering inside the basilar membrane is about five times wider at the apex of the cochlea than compared to the top base even though the cochlea itself narrows towards its apex it vibrates in response to the sound transmitted to the fluid filled cochlea by deflections of the oval window which is initiated by the bones of the middle ear the acoustical stimuli initiates a traveling wave in the cochlea which propagates from the base towards the apex of the basilar membrane that is growing in amplitude and slowing in velocity until the point of maximum displacement is reached the high frequency displaces the base of the basilar membrane which is stiffer and the low frequencies maximally displaces the apex which is giving to a topographical mapping of the frequency so the different type of sound waves which are generally produced so the sound intensity can also be differentiated depending upon what type of the sound which is directly hitting this particular tympanic membrane directly from the external ear so there are the different sound which are perceived depending upon the different sounds the basilar membrane will be contracted so the basilar membrane contractions which mainly depends upon the what type of the sound which is generally produced from the tympanic membrane within the scala media a top of the basal membrane is the organ of cauti the collective term for all the elements involved in the construction of sound the organ of cauti includes three main structures the sensory cells called as hair cells and elaborate framework of supporting cells and the terminations of the auditory nerve fibers so each human ear contains one row of about 3500 inner hair cells and three rows of outer hair cells totaling about 12000 cells the afferent nerve fibers running from the inner hair cells accounting for 95% of the afferent nerve fibers in the auditory nerve and finally gives rise to the perception of sound the outer hair cells receive the efferent inputs from the brain and help sharpen the frequency resolving power of the cochlea so from the upper end of the each hair cell protrude relatively stiff tiny hair cells known as stereocilia each hair cell has a 50 to 200 stereocilia the heights of the stereocilia increases progressively across the hair cell so the tops approximate an inclined plane 
so atop the organ of corti the tectorial membrane so the stereocilia of the outer hair cell extend into the indentations in the bottom of the tectorial membrane so the movement of the fluid in the cochlea produces vibrations of the uh, basilar membrane these vibrations when st the stereocilia inserted into the tectorial membrane depending upon the direction of the bend ion channels in the hair cells either stretch open or close ultimately the change in ion conductance in hair cells which either increase or decrease the firing rate of the auditory nerve fiber so here you can clearly see in this particular picture the response of this particular hair cells depending upon the contraction the fine filamentous structures known as the tip links run in parallel to the plane of the bilateral symmetry connecting the tips of adjacent stereocilia the tip links provide the means for rapidly transmitting the hair bundle movement into a receptor potential when the hair bundle is deflected towards the tallest stereocilium the cation selective channels open near the tips of the stereocilia opening of the channels causes the influx in the potassium ions and a rapid depolarization of the entire hair cell so the depolarization in turns to the influx of the calcium ions through the voltage gated calcium channels at the base of the hair cell the calcium triggers the release of the neurotransmitter from the synaptic vesicle also located at the base of the hair cell this stimulated the afferent nerve fibers which from part of the auditory nerve and the signal is thus passed along the brain so this is what you are study detail about the transduction of the nerve impulse.